Welcome back fellow coders, my name is Fernando and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how you can create your own kata and code words. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so to create your first kata, you have to have an idea and you have to have a good understanding of what it takes to create katas. So you need to know levels, um, the, the ranking system that Cold Wars has and you probably should be blue belt or higher to create katas. So I'll leave this link in the description and then you can go over it and you know just see the basics of what it takes. Uh, so I'll just go over the sort of the bullet points. You have to have uh, a, a, an idea it has to be unique as well so if you have an idea just look up on uh, code words search for katas search uh, keywords and make sure that no somebody else hasn't already done what you already what you're trying to accomplish otherwise you're gonna be wasting your time um, as I've already said you have to solve tons of katas um, and assessing the right quality for the right kind of kata. Now, when you finish your kata, it's gonna go into be into beta, and other people are gonna be able to actually complete the, the kata, and they're gonna uh, give their ranking based on how hard it was for them. Um, this here, also here uh, you have different types of katas fundamentals buck fades etc puzzles projects full projects yeah okay so remember to give this a read and I'm just gonna put both of these links here and you can read this one as well how to translate a kata is it's actually easier than creating a kata because you're just translating. Now, so for example, I've translated quite a few from other languages to Python, and I've translated some from Python to Swift. And yeah, just it's not too hard to translate because you just have to look at what the original author has done. Uh, or other translations and just translate that and just give that a quick read and you do have to complete a kata before you can translate so just keep that in mind okay so let's take a look at what it takes to begin creating a kata in the Code Wars website so if you go to the to your profile here you should see this new kata button. Uh, I believe it takes 50 or 100 points. I'm not sure. And then you'll get this here for which is a creation where you can create katas. So I've already have one here. That this tutorial is not about programming. It's more of a how sort of a walkthrough on how to create one. So first things first, you need a name for your kata and as I said before, you have to search through the array of katas to make sure that no one already has done that before. So here we're just doing an example of an addition in Java. But this applies to every or any other language. So you need a name, you need the discipline. This is gonna be fundamentals, it's just basic addition. And we're gonna be using some for loops and some random numbers nothing too complicated I've estimated is probably an eight well maybe a seven a lot contributors and it explains what that does here people can change your cut that will listen to a better face Uh, you'll have to select a 
language here and if it's different versions of it um, you select another version and the description you can use markup and HTML I just have a simple something simple here uh, and this is what it's gonna look like uh, just have a you know we're gonna add a list of numbers and return its sum and I also have a quick note here that we are going to be giving positive integers so you don't have to worry about verifying the input if it's negative or something else so the input here is going to be as I said integers and then all you have to do is return the result you can preview here how it looks and if you have HTML or markup you can add pictures here and you can add tables uh, you can add you know, anything that you can do on markup and HTML okay so let's take a look at what I've done by the way when this is empty uh, you can create you can insert a sample here just to give you an idea but uh, you can just start from scratch as well so this class that I created here is just a simple arithmetic class and I have a method here called add which is going to add all of the nums provided as parameters um, so we start with zero result and then it goes through this for loop and add all adds all the numbers and then we get the result but nothing fancy here and then on our example test cases we are making sure that the add method is functioning as we say it is so we have our expected 10 and then we add two fives which give us 10 um, and then we have this one we have 16 as expected and we have three digits this time so if we run this you're going to get the console output uh, and we have simple test pass i haven't shown you the random test that's uh we'll talk about this in a few seconds so let's just go ahead and add one more let's say five 71, 26, and 34. And let me add that real quick. And we should get 136. So let's run that again. and we have passed it again so it looks like our add method is working uh, as we expect but you can see how this will be tedious to have to create one by one assertion test uh, so as a better way to do this with random test and with a random test you can create uh, you know this the sky is the limit to what you can do because you are creating adding a little bit of randomness to the test to the unit testing so for that remember also to hit save here and for the test cases I'm actually going to show you that on my ID
Okay, so I have the, the same class here, the arithmetic test, and I've added a new method here. You always want to have sort of the same name as your original method, in this case, the add method, and then add the sol for, which stands for solution. So this is the method that you can create on the test. And this one, this result is gonna be tested against what the user is submitting. Um, let's ignore this for a second. This is the, sim the same test that you saw earlier, except for the one that I added uh, at the last few minutes. And then we have a new test here called random test. Now on the random test, you don't have to create this method here. You can just create a for loop here. And make your test just as I have here but I like to I like to do the method because if you want to do different things on the when you generate the test then it, you know you don't have to add more code to it so for example I wanted to have more than you know two numbers and you can also change the let's just highlight this so on this generate random test i created you can call this method many times here i have it called two times the first time i'm just doing 10 tests of two numbers and the maximum random number is 10. On the second time I call it, I'm also, I'm also doing 10 tests, but this time with three numbers and we're going all the way up to 50. And then you can do another one with 50 tests with five digits, uh, max bound can be 150 or whatever. So you see where this can be useful. And on this random test, on this random test uh, generation method, it's just a for loop, and it's all it is. Uh, so that prevents you from actually hard coding test by test. Uh, so what I will suggest you do and other coders also do is on the, you can do a simple test, then you can also create another one. You can add edge test or any other test that you think could be useful for whatever kata you are doing. And, uh, you know, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing crazy about doing the test. You just have to know a little bit about unit testing and randomness. And the whole class is here. And this one, in the test cases, is where you want to add your random test and special test cases. So, as I shown you on my IDE, it's the same thing. We have simple case, simple test. We have uh, a few random calls, a few random calls to our generate random test method. And then we have this. So if you see here, this assert, this is assertion here is what test is testing our private method 
which we know is right and that's going to be compared to what the user method types in the kata here and that's all to it that's that's all it is to to create an akata uh, as i say the hardest thing to do is come up with a clever clever idea but once you have all of this and you have validated your solution um actually missed a few things here Let's just copy this and and then just gonna take this off. And this is what the user is gonna that's where the user is gonna put their code. Uh, you can also have preloaded code. Uh, if you have if you want to have some type of you know, struct or a class that you want to have a class that you want the user to have available without having to type it in their solution um, and yeah that looks about it and then once you have that you'll want to save and you'll want to publish and once you publish then it's going to be on a, on beta for a while and, and until a lot of users complete it and then once it passes the beta phase or if it does passes the beta phase then it will go on to be a, a regular kata and lastly let's preview our kata see how it will look to a user I'm not sure what's wrong with this but anyways And the user can only see the sample test. So they can only see this. They can't see the random test. So let's copy the solution. And see how we do we'll run the samples mr semicolon and we've passed the simple test then we do attempt should do the random test i hope i don't have any errors there okay so we are good there and that's really we can go back to the editor And that's how it is. So I hope that you learn how to create the kata. Uh, let me know in the comments if I missed anything or if you have any questions uh, regarding creating a kata or even translating a kata. So until the next one, color with a purpose. And thank you for watching. See you on the next video.